vet again. And um, what we've done here is um, we've spotted a female bearded dragon um, flying on the edge of the road here on the little mound. Um, we're in the middle of spring right now. Um, spring is breeding season for these guys. Um, and I just thought I'd talk on a topic um, which um, there's a lot of talk about it on um, Facebook and uh, forums about, you know, females laying without being mated. Um, this is, it's not actually something that is normal for these guys. Um, what we're finding in the wild is, we came out last year in late spring, early summer, all the way up to, you know, Christmas, um, and all the females full of eggs. All pregnant, there was evidence that they've recently laid or they were actually gravid at that time. Um, then we came out uh, late summer, early autumn, and not one female we found was actually gravid um, or had eggs or any evidence of recently laid. They were actually all quite fat and had some good condition to them. So we have come out already at the very start of spring and um, some of the females were gravid and some of them not. What we're seeing is we've come off a very, very harsh um, dry period. We're in the, probably the worst drought in history in Australia. This is the arid zone. Um, they've got less than 55 mils of rain out here in the last uh, 12 months. So it's a very hard, harsh time and these bearded dragons are hanging on. So what happens is, is a lot of these females, uh, um, you know, the ones that are in good condition at the end of uh, autumn, um, they'll come into spring and they'll be mated straight away um, and start uh, developing follicles and then go on to egg laying. And then now we're moved west, so um, some of the ones we found were about 200 kilometers east from here, where it's a bit more green, there's been a bit more of rain, there's been nothing out here. So we're not actually finding any uh, females that are actually ha are gravid or have evidence of laying yet. So um, the season's a bit later here. So it, it comes to, you know, what points, what things make these guys um, be responsive to egg laying and the whole breeding process. So uh, the first of all thing is, um, is your presence of a male, whether that's social, um, because we do know that they are social, but also him actually mating the female and uh, stimulating her to uh, ovulate her um, eggs. Um, that's a presence there, um, you know, and actually fertilizing the egg. So uh, we actually have, we're finding in this season, a lot of pairs together. I'm talking within 10 meters of each other, within five meters, within two meters of each other. So the male's just sitting up in the tree up here. So he doesn't need to get the warmth. Um, he's, you know, just looking out for female. So um, that is a factor that we, you know, to have proper egg laying um, and proper breeding, um, you have the male there. Uh, the second is the season. So the photo period, the daylight length um, from the 21st of June, it gets longer here in Australia in the Southern Hemisphere. And that we know in reptiles, that's a trigger for them to start coming out of brumation. It happens in birds as well, and even in animal, uh, other mammals. Um, it affects the hypothalamus in the brain, and that starts, then causes the whole breeding uh, cycle, reproductive cycle to start. So the photo, increase in photo period, and we do know that these uh, bearded dragons have a pineal eye on the top, so they are very responsive to the daylight length and light. Um, so that's a trigger there. And then once we get, um, there's other things such as heat, obviously it's getting warmer. Out here now we're starting to get Early spring, it was 27, 28 degree days. Uh, now it's hitting uh, 37 degree days. So that heat is, you know, getting them more active. Um, they're able to di digest more food. They're actually, uh, their bodily functions are gonna be uh, switched on being an ectothermic a reptile. So that's another thing. So, and then um, the last thing is food. Um, the amount of food availability. So as I said, it's been the harshest season out here. There hasn't been any rain, there's no food, so the females are not receptive, they're not producing eggs. Um, and 
um, going through and producing those follicles um, to go through and lay. So that, you know, so from all of this, we've got all the seasons, um, we've got the heat, we've got everything there, but the big thing is, is the food availability. And that's where one of the big problems with pet bearded dragons is, is overfeeding. Um, these bearded dragons, it's boom or bust times. They don't always have food available, so they will go out and eat as much as they can during between September and about March, April to get all their food they can because their aim is to get big and breed out here. In captivity, you know, if you've only got a female dragon, you don't want to get her as fat as possible. You don't want to feed her. She doesn't have anywhere to put that energy towards. Um, you know, so the females in captivity, um, the biggest stimulator for them, you're, you know, it comes into season, you're providing all this heat, all this light, and then massive amounts of food. And that massive amount of food is overriding the normal process of the male having to fertilize an egg to, um, to produce the follicles and go through egg laying. So um, it's really important with a lot of those females and males, we need to reduce the amount of food intake into them because we know that is the number one trigger for them to start laying. So, and laying, um, as soon as you start that reproductive process without everything being there, the male not being there, not enough calcium to line the shells, um, it's a massive load on the female, we're gonna run into medical problems. So, you know, we have females dying from uh, uh, follicles which are burst within them. Um, we have females dying from hypocalcemia and egg binding. And those are situations which are perfectly pre uh, preventable with reducing the calorie intake. So I hope that clears up something about, uh, you know, abnormal egg laying by females in captivity. Um, and it's a generally related to, you know, giving portion control and controlling diet. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, Beardy Vet signing out. Until next time, catch you later.